Hello, this is Matthew Robert Payne, and here's uh, going to be a video that uh, I feel inspired uh, to bring forth today. Um, <clears throat> I think it's going to be called Finding the Silver Lining. One of uh, my uh, favourite uh, films, a film that uh, I really enjoyed, had... Uh, the girl from the Hunger Games, I forget her name. Uh, she was in uh, the film and uh, another uh, guy, <clears throat> actor that I really like. Not really good with actors' names, but uh, the film was called The Silver Linings Playbook or Silver Linings Playbook. And it's about a mentally ill uh, guy uh, falling in love uh, with this woman. And uh, out of the film, I, I got the understanding of the American uh, term silver linings is uh, simply or what I've come to uh, understand is finding the good in something, like uh, something can be bad, but making good of something, uh, finding um, the redeeming factor to something that's happened. Um, and... Uh, I think it's uh, an important uh, practice. Uh, it's not uh, needed. It's not particularly essential to to living. Just like uh, uh, my shirt said, says, "Fueled by Jesus and coffee." Um, people uh, can get by uh, without coffee. Uh, coffee. It's an essential for life, but it's an ingredient uh, in a good life, and I really enjoy coffee. So finding the silver lining isn't essential uh, to life, but uh, within the life of successful people, uh, they uh, tend to <clears throat> organise their life in such a way where they find the silver lining in things. Um <clears throat> Oftentimes uh, when uh, you struggle with a certain thing or a certain uh, thing that uh, you've been through, uh, you can attempt to uh, find the silver lining. You can uh, attempt to find uh, the good in things. Um, I know, uh, I know uh, that uh, me sharing that I had a, uh, 41 year addiction to uh, pornography and uh 39 year addiction to uh escorts and prostitutes i know that uh confession has helped a lot of people i don't necessarily have the keys and the tools to uh help you uh get free of uh, your addiction but uh sharing that <coughs> has encouraged a lot of people and uh, taken uh, guilt and condemnation away from people and uh, many people who don't struggle with those uh, sorts of sins uh, found <coughs> my testimony relatable. Uh, they felt that uh, if I would share my deepest, darkest uh, sins with them, that I could be... <coughs> <laughs> depended on uh, to tell the truth about things, that uh, they could trust me. And um, there's a law, uh, it's one of uh, the seven laws of influence. And there's a law called the law of candor. And it essentially says that uh, if you make a practice of self-deprecating comments about yourself, if uh, you make a practice of putting yourself down and exposing things about your life that aren't flattering, that uh, if you make a practice of that, then uh, people will read or pay attention to what you say and uh, they'll believe in you. You will have uh, built uh, rapport with them uh, because they know that uh, if you share self-deprecating, uh, uh, unflattering things about yourself, that uh, you'll probably uh, share the truth uh, when you're sharing the truth. And um, 
So I've made a practice of that. <clears throat> I also uh, suffer with diabetes. I suffer with a mental illness. I suffer with a heart condition. And uh, bringing that forth, <clears throat> sharing that uh, clearly and honestly uh, with my readers and people who are watching my videos, builds a rapport in people. They may not suffer with the same heart condition. They may not uh, be obese like me and uh, suffer from diabetes. Uh, they may not uh, be suffering from a mental illness like bipolar, but it's relatable. It's like people say, well, uh, he's, he's uh, suffering with these things and he seems to be in good spirits. Uh, he seems to be an overcomer and perhaps uh, my life isn't so bad after all. Uh, so um, I make a practice of uh, sharing the hardships, sh sharing the things I go through, uh, not only uh, because I find that they're relevant uh, to what I have to say and uh, it's good to uh, not hide anything in my life, but I find also that uh, it brings comfort to people, it brings understanding to people, and um, uh, it's funny that sharing... <clears throat> bad things in your life and sharing things that you suffer actually encourages people. It brings people encouragement. People are encouraged. Um, I remember uh, hearing a report that initially when Facebook <coughs> started, people were sharing all the good things and the best side of their life. And um, uh, Facebook found that... Uh, people uh, tuning into Facebook were getting depressed. <clears throat> they were getting depressed because everyone was sharing good things and all the good news made them feel bad, made the other readers uh, feel bad. And um, apparently uh, the report said that Facebook had to make a change to the algorithm so more bad news got through so people didn't get depressed. And Similarly, it's an opposite but similar uh, reaction when I share the things I've suffered or the things I'm suffering and coping with. Uh, rather than um, make you upset and sad uh, that I'm currently suffering those things, it actually encourages uh, people. It actually uh, encourages them that, you no, know, I uh, got free of... Uh, my porn addiction and my prostitution addiction, and um, I, I I got free for six months, three times, and uh, on the fourth time I got free. I was free for seven months, and I fell uh, back into it. And um, so at present, uh, I'm having a struggle uh, with pornography, <clears throat> and that I'm really confident now that I've, I've beat it four times so I know I can uh, do it again. Uh, but uh, perhaps that's a silver lining uh, for you. Perhaps uh, that uh, can be turned around to a silver lining. Perhaps uh, if uh, you're a male and 50% of males uh, have uh, got an addiction to pornography and struggle with pornography, perhaps it's uh, good news to know that I got free of that three times for six months. And um, and even though I got free again this time for seven months, uh, I fell back into it. And uh, you might <coughs> get excited about the fact that I've fallen back into it. I, I, I don't think anyone but a narcissist would uh, be happy that I fell back into it. Um, but uh, it may be encouraging uh, for you to know that um, like you're having a struggle with your own addiction and it's very hard to break free of, it might be encouraging to know that someone else who's written 121 books and has 4,000 videos and is somewhat of a leader in the Christian faith, uh, they fall too and they're susceptible too and uh, they're... Uh, the um 
uh, can suffer uh, from the same addiction and uh, not have uh, the power uh, to overcome it uh, without uh, supernatural help. And so I've found uh, that uh, one of the advantages of, of suffering and going through hardship, and I think the Bible uh, says it too, that um, that it's a good thing because you can uh, put down your hand and lift other people up who are suffering through the same thing. And uh, I uh, I don't get to talk to a lot of people uh, over Facebook phone. I, I don't uh, communicate uh, with a lot of people, but I did uh, do... Uh, one video uh, about my addiction to por pornography, the consequences of having a um, addiction to prostitutes, and um, it, it was seen by over seventy thousand people. And the video has helped a lot of people, and uh, I'm very happy for that. Uh, that God see, saw fit uh, to make uh, one of my videos go viral. That's the only one. Uh, some YouTube channel uh, has 50,000, 70,000 views for every one of their videos, and I've only got one out of uh, 4,000 videos that's been that successful. <laughs> uh, I haven't uh, worked out the formula yet, um, but um, I'm really glad that uh, God uh, sh shared and put a spotlight on that video Because having an addiction to prostitutes is something, or using the services of prostitutes is something that a lot of males uh, do, and it's an important subject. And uh, I shared uh, a little bit about my life and uh, the bad things about uh, being addicted to a prostitute and uh, some of the consequences of being addicted, and uh, it was very helpful. Um, so... I want to uh, encourage you, if we use that all as an introduction uh, to say this, I want to encourage you to be forthright and honest and transparent about some of the things you've suffered or some of the things you're suffering through and some of the things you're coping with, because uh, you also uh, can be used to encourage people and lift people up. Don't don't feel the need to always post something positive on Facebook. When you're struggling, when you're going through a hard time, if you're suffering with something, um, be honest and be transparent and share that uh, with your readers, uh, share that uh, on your Facebook wall. Ask people when you're struggling with something, ask your friends for prayer or support or uh, for, for them to keep you in their thoughts um, and uh, lift you up uh, towards God. Um, uh, I, I've found uh, personally that I, I don't really like people uh, listening to me and then saying, I know how you feel when they don't actually know how I feel. I, I think, uh, Many people seem to think that they understand the subject of depression, but unless you've been in a serious depression, I don't believe you can fully understand it. You can watch a movie about a person in depression, someone who was clinically depressed and someone who suicides, and you can get like a fundamental understanding or a little understanding but you really need to experience something. You really need to uh, go through something uh, for you to fully understand it. And uh, one of uh, the benefits of being clinically depressed and uh, one of the benefits of uh, living for 17 years when I wanted to die and not wanting to live um, gives me an empathy, it gives me an understanding, it gives me a compassion for people who are suffering depression. 
Uh, and one thing uh, you can't uh, do as a person is you can't lift another person out of depression. When someone's depressed, you can have empathy, you can have compassion on them, you can listen to them, you can try and encourage them, but it's actually the person who's got to find a way uh, to come out of their own depression. So even uh, as someone who's been uh, clinically depressed in the past and someone who's suffered uh, depression to the point of going to kill myself three times, um, I have an understanding of depression, an understanding of uh, wanting to kill yourself. I have an understanding of not wanting to live, even with all that experience, even with that understanding, even with that life experience, I still can't reach down and pull someone out of uh, their own depression. I, I still can't uh, be used to lift a person out of the depression. I, w I wish, I wish sometimes that I had that experience. My brother, uh, my older brother is quite depressed at the moment. And I wish I could say something or do something to lift him out of that. And um, I know uh, if uh, you're a loved one of someone who's depressed, if you're a father, a mother, a sister, or a friend of someone who's depressed, I, I know uh, that it can uh, be very upsetting uh, to uh, watch them be depressed and listen to them and um I know all of you uh, wants to, some of you would almost give you right arm. Uh, some of you uh, would uh, uh, give $500 out of your bank account uh, if only they could come out of the depression. There's uh, so many of you who may know someone who's depressed that would do anything uh, to alleviate the depression uh, in your friend's life or your loved one's life. Uh, but uh, I found it to be the case that all you can do is say encouraging things and be nice and be there for them and listen to them and be present with them. But uh, <clears throat> there doesn't seem to be much you can do to actually have success in lifting them out of their depression uh but um uh, people who are suffering depression uh appreciate the fact that you've been there they appreciate uh your testimony they appreciate that you have compassion on them and they appreciate uh your testimony uh and um it does mean a lot uh little Little things that you say, little encouraging things that you say can be meaningful for them. Um, so uh, I, I uh, perhaps there were some people who uh, were depressed that uh, were meant to uh, listen to this video. But I, I really uh, want to uh, encourage you uh, to... Uh, turn around the hardships and turn around the hard things and the things that you're suffering and look to use your experience and use your encounters and use your suffering uh, to develop a silver lining, uh, to bring something good, to bring something charitable, to bring something worthwhile out of it uh, so that uh, there's a good thing that uh, that uh, there is a silver lining and there's a good end to the story uh, of, of your life. I hope uh, this uh, video has been insightful for you and encouraging for you. Uh, you can take the time and pray for me that I can break free of this addiction again. Uh, you can pray for me that I continue uh, to be inspired uh, to make uh, videos each day you can pray uh, for my brother uh, to find a purpose in life and find something to do with his time 
you can just uh, ask God uh, to bless me and bless my brother, um, and that would be good. Uh, so I pray, well, I hope uh, that uh, you found uh, this uh, video enlightening, and uh, I hope that uh, if you liked it, uh, you can press like on YouTube, and that uh, actually helps more people see the video. Uh, if uh, if you're new to my channel, uh, I encourage you uh, to subscribe to my channel if you choose to, and uh, I pray, uh, I hope that uh, you have a wonderful day.